present Dracula. Leaving his fiancée Mina Murray to spend some time with her best friend Lucy Westenra, Jonathan Harker, a young lawyer, journeys to Transylvania on business. Dracula. Everywhere, eyes red, blood red, eyes no. Hush now, Jonathan. Hush. Easy now. It's a dream. Nothing. Blood. <laughs> you are not afraid to travel. I beg your pardon, sir. We are afraid. We only travel for necessity. I have no reason to be afraid, sir. No reason, he says. You go far, Englishman? I am a lawyer with business in your country. Uh, laws won't protect you. Nothing can protect you. Not true. Not true. You can be safe. Who is the business with, sir? Our count, sir. Our count? You know what day this is? I, I, I don't understand. St. George's Day. Oh, tonight... Midnight, all evil things in the world will have power. Are you a Christian? Yes, madam, I am. Then pray. This Count, who is this Count, sir? Count Dracula, is this your business? <sighs> don't go. I beg you, oh, don't go. I have business with him, I am expected. Please, before you leave us. Take this. A crucifix is no use. Garlic, maybe. Holy, perhaps. For my sake, sir. For your mother's sake. For your soul. Take it. Wear it. Wear it round your neck. Please, sir. My church says these things are idolatrous. Faith is enough. Wear it, sir. Wear it in good health. Very well. To please the lady... Crucifix! Where's my crucifix? No, I need no. my crucifix! Easy now, Jonathan. Easy. Here. Take mine. Hold it if it gives you peace. Hold it. Every night. Every night, Sister Agnes, I see such things. Such things. Hear such things. Help me to sleep. I am so tired. So tired and so... I dare not sleep, sister. We pray for you. We are all praying for you, Jonathan Harker. We pray for your peace. To escape the horror in your mind. Listen. Thank you. Ah, you're right, Uncle Miss. It is a pleasure. This way, Miss Murray. Mr. Hawkins said we were to show you into his room the instant you came. Is there news of Mr. Harker? No. Nothing, Mr. Pensmith. Nothing. Uh, come along, come along with the copying. No slacking now, or I shall know it. Do here, Miss Murray. <clears throat> uh, Miss Murray, Mr. Hawkins has requested. Oh, excuse me, my dear. Uh, do sit down. And, Mr. Pensniff, you may have this copied, if you please. Yes, sir. Yes, of course. I would just like to make bold to say how we're all hoping to see Mr. Harker sooner rather than later, Miss. Excuse me, sir. Ma'am. Jonathan is well liked, my dear. Very strange, Miss Murray. Not a note, not a letter, not a sound, not a sight... But he's in safe hands, of course. Count Dracula is well known in Transylvania. But we checked his credentials before sending your fiancé. No harm will come to him, I promise you. 
No, of course. I just became worried. He said he would write. We are only just engaged, as you know, and to be separated so soon, not easy, sir. I regard him as a son, my dear. I have great hopes. And now with you alongside him, I double my hopes. <laughs> Mr. Hawkins, how kind you are. The business he is in is not dangerous. Oh, not at all. A matter of transferring some funds, of buying some property, of arranging for some shipments, titles, deeds. English law and their law. <laughs> Unraveling the one from the other. Good experience for a common man. I see. I assure you, as soon as I have news... Uh, yes, of course. Nothing to worry about, eh? You told me you had a friend who went to Whitby. Sea air. Why not join her? I can telegraph you when he reports to us. I promise you. Welcome to my house, John Harker. Welcome. Come freely, go safely. Leave something of the happiness you bring. Count Dracula? I am Dracula. Come, sit down at the table and let me bring you wine. Uh, my people are not available now, so I shall wait on you while you eat. You will join me, sir? No, excuse me. I have already dined. Listen to them. The children of the night. What music they make. When you have eaten, sleep. And tomorrow we begin work? I shall be absent for a while, excuse me. The necessary papers will be in the library downstairs. I would ask you not to go elsewhere in the castle. It is an old building, dangerous in part. Doors locked in some part. Did you see with my eyes and know with my knowledge, you would the better understand. Our ways are not your ways. From you, I will improve my English also, so when I come to my new London estate, I shall not seem a stranger. You speak English very well, sir. <laughs> you flatter. The house you have found? Is old, very old, in Purfleet. Twenty acres surrounded by trees and walls. Maybe a little gloomy. Oh, I don't mind so gloomy a place. Neighbours? Only one close by. An asylum. Mm. Uh, a private lunatic asylum, not visible from the grounds. Good. I don't mind the darkness. Too old to look for the bright, voluptuous sunshine, the sparkling waters of youth. My heart is not attuned to mirth, Mr. Harker. I love the shade and the shadow, and to be alone with my thoughts. <sighs> that sounds so close. Yes. Yes, he is close. Hunting. You are tired, Mr. Harker. Tomorrow evening will be soon enough to work. He sleeps quietly enough, Sister Agnes, as if, as if at peace for a while. I pray he is, Sister. I pray he is. Sister, Sister, we're Help me, I saw, I saw women, three women, and such faces, such bodies, such, such soft, voluptuous looks. Help me. I want to be blind. Take the sleeping drug. Blind me so I can't see anymore. Please, I beg you, please. Easy now. For your own good, you must see. No, please. Good morning. Oh, oh, damn. I, I, I didn't see you in my shaving mirror, Count. I didn't... I, uh, 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 are you unwell, sir? No, come, come, uh, come, please. Please, what are you... I, I, I need a plaster. I, I've cut my face. I'm bleeding. Count, let me... Go, sir. No! 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 
He had me by the throat, sister. I swear, I never saw such demonic fury in any... Eyes blazing. I see it every night when I sleep. He comes to me, takes me, holds my neck and dips his head to my throat. Pray with me for deliverance from this evil. Pray. You think I haven't prayed? He, he touched the crucifix that woman gave me. It was round my neck yet, and he, he backed away, almost snarling. <gasps> what are you doing? This is a mistake. He threw it. Man's vanity. A foul bauble. He wrenched the window open and threw it out and out into the courtyard far away below. I think I am going mad. He, he locked all the doors. I was trapped. Doors. Doors. Doors everywhere. All locked and bolted. I was a prisoner. Am I mad, Sister Agnes? I... I don't know. Help me. I beg you. Help me. I do hope the journey was not too tiring, Mina, my dear. Oh, I'm so excited, dear Lucy. I almost forgot. Almost. Oh, I'm sure Jonathan will be home soon, Mina. Sure of it? Yes. Yes, of course. I never knew that Whitby was so pretty. Oh, the river there, running down to the harbour through that steep valley. Oh, and the houses ranged up the hillside over the harbour, so... Oh, it is lovely, Lucy. And see the abbey. Just a ruin, of course. Sacked by the Danes, they say. You remember Marmion, where the girl is walled up? Oh, yes, yes. Well, there, in Whitby Abbey. And over on the other side, my favourite place for walks. Over the town and looking down over the harbour... And along the headland called Kettle Ness. <laughs> Such strange names. My own they are. But there, in the quiet graveyard, is a place of such beauty, such peace. People walk and sit there every day. We shall go tomorrow when you are quite recovered from your journey. You were very brave to come alone. Mm. Tell me your news. Your two suitors. Have they come to the point yet? <laughs> Three. <laughs> Dr. Seward has thrown his hat into the ring, I believe. <laughs> it could turn a girl's head to have so much choice. Oh. I wish it were only one. For you had no one to hurt when Jonathan asked for your hand. Have you decided? Well, they've not yet asked me. Now, we're nearly in the Crescent. I should tell you that Mother is not too well. But excited to be seeing you again. She's very fond. stepped into the light of the flare the woman carried, and I... and I saw... I saw the leather bag he carried... heaving... heaving... and... from the mouth of the bag... suddenly in the light... a small... tiny... hand... for one moment, and... and then... the man... turned... And I saw, in the light, Count Dracula. Come, 
Come, my friends. Come to me. I have a gift for you. Jesus, Mary, dear Lord, protect and preserve this your servant from evil thoughts. Give him peace and sleep without these fearful visions. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Miss Westenra? Miss Murray said I might come in. Dr. Seward, of course. Please, won't you sit down? <laughs> Thank you. I'll... Oh, not on your hat, sir. What? Oh, yes. Uh, uh, no, yes. <clears throat> I must come to the point, Miss Westenra. Lucy. May I call you Lucy? Sir. I'm a plain man. I have my own practice, as you know. My specialization is in disorders of the mind, and, to be frank, I feel as disordered as any man just now. Oh, please don't distress yourself, sir. I want you to know that I care deeply for you. And that life with you would be a joy to me. I... I want to tell you of my love and... Oh, please. Please don't cry, my dear girl. I would only make you happy. Oh, sir, I am sorry. Could I not hope that sometime maybe you could love me? I am sorry, John. Truly. Um, may I ask, is there anyone? Yes, there is. I see. I want you to know that I hope for your happiness. And if you ever need a friend, you must count me as one of your best. man. Oh, Mina. So kind and brave when I told him I could not marry him. What a dear man he is. Lucy, you have to bear up. A Mr. Morris left his card. He will call in a short time, he said. Oh, no, no. Wipe your eyes, my dear. Oh, I would not go through this for all the pearls in the world. <laughs> Yet I think maybe there is a bit of you, dear Lucy, that is flattered by it. Mina, you're unkind. <laughs> Perhaps. Well, I'll go right on in and see the lady. Oh. I don't have the hang of the manners, the formality of this place. It's more hedged around than a South American ritual dance. I'll go in and take my chance. Oh, dear, stay. Mr. Quincy Morris has such a way with him. I shall be in the conservatory, my dear. You can only tell the truth. <sighs> Yes? Mr. Morris. Miss Lucy. I'll come to the point straight off the bat. I know I ain't good enough to regulate the fixings of your little shoes, but I guess if you wait till you find a man that is, you'll go to join them seven young women with the lamps when you quit. Won't you just hitch up alongside of me and let us go down the long road driving in double harness? Oh, Mr. Morris, you do make me smile. Your American ways are quite foreign to us here. I'm a beast and a monster, I own. I speak light of things I take serious, Miss Lucy. I'm not yet broken to harness, Mr. Morris. Nor ready for the hitching, whatever that might be. You're angry because I spoke in a light manner. I made, I made a mistake, maybe. This is a grave moment for a man. I am no lightweight. I own I never loved a girl like I love you. I never saw a girl with such eyes. Such a sweet face. Such a girl I would die for willingly. Die for. No, no talk of dying, Mr. Morris, please. Lucy, I reckon you to be clean grit through and through. Tell me, like one fine fellow to the next, is there anyone else you care for? If there is, I'll never trouble you one hair's breadth again. 
but will be if you let me, your faithful friend. There is someone else. Though he has not yet told me he loves me. What can I say to you to... to soften... Oh, no. No, girl. Brave girl. Don't cry now, my dear. If it's for me, I'm a hard nut to crack. I take it standing up. If that other fella don't know his happiness, he'd better look for it soon, or he'll have to deal with me. You and I will be friends. And that's rarer than a lover. Just give me one kiss to keep off the darkness now and then. Again. So, that makes us friends, as nothing else can. Thank you for your sweet honesty. Goodbye now. Lucy. Oh, I don't want to talk about it, Mina. I could have loved them both. I seem to be able to do nothing for him, Mother Superior. My concern is also for you, Sister Agnes. He may be a violent man. No. No, he is a gentleman. He has been hurt in his mind, but nothing he says can be true, Mother. It is just his deranged mind. We must pray. You cannot believe. The child in the bag, the cut face, the mirror that did not reflect the man, you cannot believe. I shall pray for him, as will you. Mother of God, it cannot be true. What is that? Go and look. Go and look, Jonathan. Go to the window and see, see what makes that. What is it that flaps so out there in the dark? Go. window, another and from it, under the pale moonlight, a paler face peered, and then slowly inched out of the window and began crawling slowly down the dark ivy over the wall, spreading a dark fluttering cape wide over the wall. Crawled over the wall of the castle. I must get out. I must get out. The worst thing, the, the, the thing that appalled me. He was crawling, head down, like a, like a huge bat. Save myself. Search for a way. Passages, dark rooms, and slowly, slowly worked my way through the castle and met no one. It was as if the Count lived entirely alone in the castle. We had, we had done a little work. I had made out some bills of lading for some things he wished taken from the castle to his new estates in England. I dreamed constantly of my dear, dear Mina. 
I, I, I had no idea if my letters were being sent or not. Now, now, with that fearful man out of the way, I could hope Damn to find my way to him. freedom. He warns about going to other parts of the castle. How am I to escape unless I try? Oh, dear, dear Mina, your sweet face is with me. The room was in the corner of a tower. It had a dust-covered desk, a sofa before the window. I sat for what I thought would be a moment. Fatally, I slept. Oh, God, I slept. I pray it was a dream. Let it please have been a dream. Take him. No, he's yours. You are first. And we shall follow. Oh, so young. So strong. Let's begin. Kisses. forbade you even to set eyes on him. <laughs> back! Get back! He belongs to me. <laughs> you, you never love. <laughs> you never love. I too can love. You know I can. I promise you when I am done with him, you shall kiss him as you will. Now go. Go! We'd have nothing tonight. He'd thrown another bag on the floor by the door. I saw from under half-shut eyes. I saw the bag move as if there were some living thing. One of them opened the bag. And I heard... I swear I heard... Sweet Jesus, have mercy on the soul of a poor child. Sweet Jesus, have mercy. In Dracula by Bram Stoker... Adapted for radio by Nick McCarty, the cast was as follows. Jonathan Harker was played by Bernard Holly, Mina by Phyllis Logan, Seawood, Peter Blythe, Quincy, Paul Burchard, Lucy, Sharon Maharaj, Pensniff, John Shedden, Hawkins, Peter Lincoln, Mother Superior, Stella Forge, Coachman, Frank Gallagher, and the three vampire women were played by Wendy Seeger, Monica Gibb and Amanda Whitehead with a guest star appearance by Frederick Yeager as Count Dracula other parts were played by members of the cast the theme and incidental music was composed and created by Malcolm Clark in the BBC Radiophonic Workshop the producer in our Edinburgh studios was Hamish Wilson